Hey Ninja Note viewers, in one of our previous presentations we did cover an income statement for the perpetual system. We're going to be doing one for the periodic system and you're going to be seeing all of this over the next few minutes, but I'm going to save that for a second. At any moment, if you want, of course, you can subscribe. It helps out the channel. Make sure to also check out ninjanotes.ca where you can sign up for our site that we're developing. So let's actually begin and list some entries and then we will actually construct the cost of goods sold portion of the income statement. So let's start off with, uh, we'll have some entries listed and we will also have the beginning inventory and the ending inventory listed as well. So let's, let's go ahead and actually journalize these, these entries. So if we have a purchase for 5,000, you know that it's going to look something like this. It's going to be a purchase which is debited, accounts payable for $5,000 each. Purchases is like uh, an inventory account. That's why we debit it. And when we have the second purchase, it will be for $2,000 because that's what it says it is for. And always keep note that we have 210 and net 30, which means 2% discount if we pay within the 10 days. And we have April 1st and April 2nd of when we purchased it. So make sure to always examine that. Uh, we have a return for $1,000. So we're going to do kind of a reversing entry where accounts payable is going to be reduced by $1,000. And instead of using purchases as our credit, we're going to be using that purchase returns and allowances contra account. So that'll be for $1,000. And the shipping, which is FOB shipping, if you remember, if we are the uh, purchaser, we pay uh, the $500 of shipping. So that is going to be an account called Freight In, which is another expense account, which is going to add to the cost of our inventory. And we're going to use cash, of course, for shipping costs always. And that will be for $500. And make sure you look at the type of uh, FOB type it is because the second one which is FOB destination which was for the April 2nd entry destination remember that the the seller of the goods is the one that wants to get it to the destination so we're not the seller we're the buyer so there's going to be no entry for that and the last one which is we're going to pay for everything in full will finally be uh, how much we actually have to have to entirely pay. But before we finish that last entry, let's actually look at these T accounts and just quickly, quickly summarize them so we can figure out how much we're going to be paying in full. So the first one, that was our first entry purchase, $5,000. 5000 goes there. Accounts payable, 5000 is a credit. The second one, uh, 2000 goes on the debit side, 2000 goes on the credit side for accounts payable. Accounts payable being debited 1000 for a return and purchase returns is going to be credited 1000. Freight in, we have a debit entry for how much is that? 500 and our cash which is 500 and we have no entry. So, if we if we have $7000 of purchases and $1000 of returns, that means we're only going to be paying for $6,000 of purchases of our inventory. So how much do we have in accounts payable? We have 5000 2000 credit, 1000 debit, which means we have a final balance of 6000 that we have to pay off. So let's get rid of these T accounts. And we know that we're reducing accounts payable by 6000 But the thing is... We paid for this, oh, I forgot to add that we paid for this in in the period of the discount. So we do collect that discount. Let's say we paid for it on the 8th. So we are going to collect the 2% on both of those purchases, which is actually going to be 2% of 2% of 6,000, which is going to be $120 which will be, where is that, where is that account? We'll have it right here, which is going to be purchases discount. 
which will be for 120 and our cash will be the credit for 5880 and that would be pain in full so now that we have this we can we can finally go back to our t accounts and remember that remember that this was 120 was the discount and we we got rid of what did we we got rid of the accounts payable we paid that off and we paid uh, 5,000 or I should say a credit of 5,880 and we debited 6,000 so this has no balance anymore and this has a final balance of what is that that would be that would be 10,000 minus 500 minus 5880, which would be 3620, which is our cash balance. So 36, what did it say, 3620? Yes. Okay, so that will be our final balance. And now let's finish that income statement. So we have something that looks like this. I just made the sales part generic because that's not what matters. It's the part of the cost of goods sold that actually differs. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to figure out the cost of goods sold? Well, we have inventory, which is going to be for for the beginning, which I should say, beginning, and that's going to be for right here, $20,000. And now we have our purchases. If you remember, our purchases was $7,000 in total, so we're going to have that there, less any contra accounts which are the the returns and the discount so the returns were 1000 while the discount was 120 so that means our total purchases is going to be 5880 and the next parts will just be the the freight in since that is a cost of our inventory, you always got to remember that. And that was for $500. I think I'm just going to get rid of the T accounts now since I'm running out of some room here. And now that we have finished this part, we know that the cost of goods purchased, because this is the cost of all the goods that we purchased, is going to be uh, 5,880 plus the 500, which is going to be $6,380. So if our inventory had a beginning balance of 20,000, 6,380 was how much we purchased. That means our available goods is that's right, it's going to be 26,380. And if our ending inventory is ten thousand dollars what does that mean that means that we have actually uh, expensed or we have sold the the residual amount which is twenty six thousand three eighty minus ten thousand which would be our cost of goods sold so our total total cost of goods sold would be sixteen thousand three hundred and 80 and that's how you would determine the total cost of goods sold and then you would just continue on with your multi-step income statement listing uh, gross profit and then operating expenses just like we did in the other multi-step tutorial so you can just check that out and that's how you would do it for the periodic system this is why it would look differently for the periodic system and that's how you would write it down so just make sure to memorize it like that and you should be good to go so in the next tutorial, I'll probably talk a little bit more about inventory and then get into actually costing methods of inventory. So uh, make sure to keep watching, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate. You can like us on Facebook to receive updates or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.